Hello everyone, my name is Sue Barber and I'm author of the Chronicle of Killian series. The first book is Keeper of the Keystone and that's what I'll be reading today. I'm going to be starting at chapter two. In the last chapter, Mathis was attacked by an assailant, taken to a farmhouse and then three gunshots were heard. This one is chapter two, The Ring. A ring, recently worn by an excited father and devoted husband, now lay as motionless as its owner's body, its gleaming band barely visible in the puddle it had landed in. The air was still and calm, a gentle breeze replacing the winds and the rain, which until an hour ago had drowned the night. Since the attack, not one drop had fallen. The moon had woken from its slumber and chased the rainstorms into the darkness its faint rays cloaked by the remnants of the clouds, which allowed only the faintest glints of light to illuminate the streets below. In the darkness of the alley, something hid behind the safety of the bins. A mouse scuttled from its resting place, frightened by the intruder who, since the attack, had been crouching nervously in the shadows. Fearful eyes peered from the hiding place, darting from one end of the alley to the other. For over an hour, he had been sitting in the wet, too scared to move. He kept thinking about the look of disbelief which had flashed across Mathis's face as he had heard of his brother's death. He recollected the pain he had felt as the metal had pierced the younger man's flesh and watched in horror as the weeping blood had laced the nearby puddles. He had wept, praying for it to stop. If he'd been younger, he would have tried to help, but he knew he would be no match for the attacker. Despite feeling useless, he comforted himself with the thought that he would at least be able to prevent the attacker from finding the ring and getting too much power. He tried arriving sooner to warn Mathis of the planned assault, but he had been too late. Instead, he watched as his great nephew was stabbed and even now he wasn't sure if Mathis had survived. Trying to remember where he had seen Mathis discard the ring, he had waited until he was certain no one would venture down the alley. And then he scoured the puddles. All he could do now was to find the ring and guard it from those who craved its power. Arm outstretched, his wrinkly hand felt along the wall as a growing ache spread through his body where the feeling in his limbs began to return. Within seconds, pins and needles had set in, signalling the return of blood to the lower part of his body. For some time, he inspected every crevice, scuffling around on his hands and knees. Almost ready to give up, he leaned back on his heels and rubbed his hands together for warmth and picked up the discarded present. As he did so, he noticed a glint. Making sure no one was nearby, his hand darted to the shining object in the murky water and stowed the find in his pocket. Clutching the sodden present under his arm, he rose to his feet, his legs still shaky, and let out a sigh of relief as he turned round and disappeared. Thank you.